Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is yet another video in the STM32 Ethernet series, and today we will see how to create a TCP server. As mentioned in the poll, I will cover the raw API first, and this is why this video will cover the TCP server with raw API. I have already covered the UDP server and client parts, and you can watch them in the Ethernet playlist. So let's start the cube IDE, and create a new project. I am using STM32 F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project, and click finish. I am skipping the setup part, and you can watch the previous videos for the same. Check the Ethernet playlist, and watch the connection videos. So this is the main file. First of all I am going to test the ping, just like the UDP videos. Let's build and run this. So the ping test is successful, and we are good to go for the TCP server. Here are the two files for the TCP server, and let's copy them in our project. Let's take a look at the TCP server source file. I took these files from the examples provided by the ST, and modified them a little. So some of the functions should be kept as it is. I will explain the ones which we can modify. Here are the steps given to create the server. You can check out this website for more details. First step is to create the TCP block. We can do that by calling TCP new. Then we need to bind the TCP block to the local IP. Here we will do that by first converting the IP address into the integral format, and then by calling the TCP bind function. Let's change the server port to 10. The next step is to listen for the client. Here we will put the server in the listen mode. To do that, we will call the TCP listen function. At last we will initialize the accept callback function, which will be called, when the connection will be accepted by the server. TCP accept initializes the callback, TCP server accept, and now we will take a look at this function. This function will be called, when the connection from the client is accepted. Here it will initialize few more callbacks, and we will keep them as it is, except this one, TCP receive callback. This function initializes the receive callback, which will be called whenever the server will receive the data from the client. TCP server receive is where we will write our program to handle that data. Here few things are predefined. Like if the server receives the empty frame, we will close the connection. The code is commented pretty well, you can read about the rest. I will just get to the main part, which is here. When we will receive the data for the first time, the state will be set to accepted. Here we will change the state to received, and also initialize the TCP sent callback. After initializing the callback, we will call the server handle function, which will handle the received data. 
The TCP send callback should be initialized only once, and this is why the accepted state must execute after the first receive only. From the second receive onwards, the state will be set to received, and this particular part will execute. Here we will simply call the server handle function to process the received data. Let's take a look at the server handle function. This is where you will modify the program according to your requirement. First of all we will get the client's IP address, and the port. This is just in case if you want to make some use of it. The IP address is in the integral format, so we will use this function to change it to the string. Then I am copying this data into the buffer, which I will later send to the client. It's basically the incoming data, followed by this string. The incoming data is stored in the payload of the pbuff. Then we will copy the data into the pbuff, update the length to be transmitted, and send the data using the TCP send function. Let's write the main code now. First we will include the header file. Then inside the main function, initialize the TCP server. Like I mentioned earlier, it will initialize the rest of the things. This is it, let's build it once to check for any errors. We have some warnings, but they are due to the unused variables so it's all right. Let's debug the program now. I am using the Hercules for the TCP client. Let's see the calling pattern for the TCP. I am setting a breakpoint inside the TCP server except callback. Another one inside the receive callback. One more inside the TCP send callback. And the last one inside the connection close. Let's run it now, and see the order of the execution. In the Hercules, we will connect to the server IP address and the port. And here we got the first hit in the accept callback. This callback is called, when the connection between the server and the client is accepted. And as I mentioned, it initializes the rest of the callbacks. Here we got the message about the connection. Now let's send some data to the server. And we got a hit in the receive callback. Here we process the data and send something back to the client. Once the client receives the data, it sends the acknowledgement, and we got the hit in the sent callback. Also note the data, it sends the received data, along with some additional data. Here we have again, the breakpoint is called in the receive function, and now we will send the data to the client. Let me disable the breakpoints. Here we have the data we sent, along with the new one. This time it got corrupted. 
but it's fine now. Well you can take care of it when it gets corrupted. I think we should free the buffer after sending the data. You can try it, if the data gets corrupted like this. Let me remove these breakpoints. I will leave one here inside the TCP server handle function. Here we can check the IP address of the client. This address is in the integer format right now. The client port is as shown here. After using this function to convert the address to the string, we can see the proper address. If we do the IP config on the Windows machine, we can see the same IP here. So we are able to fetch the client IP, its port, the data client sent, and also we were able to send some data back to the client. This is it for this video. I hope you understood it. I myself don't know much about the protocols yet, so this is best I can do for now. In future, after learning about these protocols, I will release a better version, where I will make a practical application using these protocols. You can check out the previous videos for the connection process, and the UDP client and the server. The next video will cover the TCP client mode. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.